it's thursday right is that where we are i can't believe it's almost july and you're on one of my favorite favorite things to do with the region and it's try to stump your nerds so today is all about you guys and asking questions and i love to use this half hour to just get you guys to try to stump us throw us command tech questions or process questions and let's see if you can bring steve down this week or maggie or matt and me okay maverick you're brand new you must have a million questions well i'm more here because i'm new to this so i just want to like see how everything works i've watched a few videos on youtube of how to do command and i've used it a few times but it seems pretty straightforward to me sure how are you doing with your database and getting people in um so far everything's been fine i've only had to add two contacts now but everything's been fine um i work on a team too so they help me out with that stuff excellent excellent well, learn it well because frank has issues with it yeah. I think I'm Frank has issues with you, Steve. <laughs> well, I'm going to put something in the chat. If you have not signed up yet for the Summer of Shift, we are holding our no cost Summer of Shift series where you guys have a chance to win some pretty big prizes. So sign up today. And what we're going to if you go look at the link I just plopped in there for you guys, you're going to see that there's a whole summer of shift schedule. And here I'm, I'm looking at the screen as if I'm sharing it. Sorry, guys. So if you click on the summer of shift anywhere, you can click to register. But as you click through each day, here's everything you need for that day, plus your class prep for the next day, for the next week. So you've got that week to get caught up on shift if you have not read it. Um, I was just in Vermont for this whole week. I actually just, just got home playing in Vermont and doing some masterminds and shift was the topic on everything. Everything came back to the book shift while we were in Vermont. Um, so if you haven't read it, if you're new, if you've read it 8,000 times, it's a fantastic class. And we even cultivated a nice little beach playlist for you if you need it, if you need to feel beachy. So that's there for you. So sign up. What other questions you guys got? gonna be a quiet day gonna give you a half gonna give you your time back if nobody's got questions are you recording summer of shift yes we are recording summer of shift and it will be on the kw new england youtube page but the only way to win is to be on and be live live in person yeah, yeah on the zooms we have some fantastic big prizes, $200 or more on these big summer baskets and uh, things for your business to give away that are huge. So, and our, those partners will be on with us learning the shift series as well. Yeah, it's via Zoom only, Rebecca, this one. What time is, um, what time are these sessions? So these start July 19th at two o'clock. And then if you go to that website, it'll be on there. The whole, you'll see a whole schedule of all the days, but when you register for the Zoom, it registers you for every, every one of them. Okay, Cheryl. Brooke, did you see Cheryl's question? Yep, so I'd love a review of how to enter multiple offers for a buyer rather than writing over a previous offer. Cheryl, can you come off a of mute and just walk me through this? Cause I don't, I, yep. I don't know if I'm. Yeah, I'm sorry, saying. sequential. Like when they, they submit an offer on one house and then they don't get it and how to write the next offer without starting over from the beginning or without writing over the first offer. They make an offer on one house, they don't get that offer. 
and they make an offer on the next house. Are you There's a way. DocuSign? Yeah, are you I'm talking sorry. about in like dot loop DocuSign? It was on command when you enter the like version one, version two, or something. Oh. Um, um, the compliance oh. page. Yep. Go ahead, Mags or Steve or Nerd Herd. Go for it, Mag. You're first up. Well, okay. legally, will... too. Can, can you redo an offer legally, or do you have to new, do a new purchase and sale in your state? Um. So is are you? It's, they, they make an offer on one house. Yep. They don't get it. Then they go on. A week later, they find another house to make an offer on that house. It was a way of doing it so that you didn't have to start over from the beginning. You can use the information that Correct. you've already yeah. put in for opportunities. Right. So you mean like not having to re-upload all of your paperwork again, right? Right. For, right. Exactly. So hold on one second. Let me share and I'll show you. Oh, I'm picking up what you're putting down now. I yeah. thought you meant in dot loop or DocuSign using the same purchase and sale. No, no, I no. Gotcha. I can't share books. So unless you want Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. I'll make you a co-host. You should have it now. Okay, great. All right, you guys see in my screen? Yes, here? yes. Yeah. So let's just say I'm working with the buyer and we had an original, I'll just put something from here for right now, an original offer. Um, and let's just say the offer didn't go through so we need to redo, I don't want to redo all the consultation stuff because that's all good, right? The, we don't need to do the, have the buyer agreement again or the agency disclosure again. But, and I want to keep all the old stuff too because the old stuff is just as important, right? Because that you could mm -hmm. still legally need that stuff. So what I want to do is under here where it says under contract is a little arrow down and you pull that down and you add a version and you can call it whatever you want. Um, you know, offer to, and it creates a whole new version of the paperwork for this checklist only, just this checklist. All the, the previous checklist was fine. This is the only one that changed. And so now I can go ahead and reselect the correct one now. So now I can add the appropriate document. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Very it, nice. It's so much nicer. You keep all the old stuff, but you don't have to see the old stuff anymore. So awesome. You also want to do that and keep the old stuff because in this crazy market, sometimes Back your offer way. might fail and two days later you get a phone call. Hey, is your client still interested? Because whatever happened. Um, I made that mistake of deleting all the documents and then found out two days later that my offer was going to be accepted after all and had to recreate everything. I don't delete anything now. <laughs> Thank you. What else we got for command questions? For those of you just joining us, I'm going to throw the Summer of Shift Zoom series link in the chat. You can go play the game there. Um, and follow along with all the class schedules, the student manuals there. And once you register once, it registers you for all of them. And they are recorded on the KW New England YouTube. Just depends how long YouTube takes to publish it. We're seeing a lot of our YouTube stuff get taken down across the board. Even though we clearly state as a fake training database, they think it is cyberbullying. So if there's something you need that you know was up there or a topic we covered and you don't see it, reach out. YouTube's pulling down a ton, a ton of our training videos because they think we are cyberbullying and putting up people's real information, even though it clearly states SpongeBob SquarePants. So. So, um, 
what's your biggest pain point when you're dealing with command? Come on, we all have it. Mine is the data entry screen for, for contact. I want to find the person that designed it and beat them up. And I think it's one of the easiest things. I think the contact screen is fast. It's it's foolish that you have to page through three three and four pages. It's foolish. It could all be on one everybody screen. Everybody has info. <laughs> you only get one or two pieces of info in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, but then you have to page through it to find it all when you go to put it in. See, I like that. I like I like being able to close things down and specifically go to where I want to go. I control my contacts. Yeah, you're not a practicing agent, okay? <laughs> no, but I am a practicing database person, right? I use my database probably heavier than a lot of people in my role. So it has nothing to do with being tech savvy and has everything to do with how hard am I working that database. So I am leveraging my command app. I called some of you this week when I was on the road in Vermont from the command app. Text from it. Man, I love that command app. Who else is using the command app? I use command. I love command. Um, I love that. I app. use it. I use it for everything and it, it goes right into my phone. I, I guess my biggest beef might be, and it's just, I don't know. I think I did something in the beginning when command first turned on, I have like five of everybody um, and I got to clean it up. It, I think it was one of those things in the beginning, like don't duplicate. And I did like the pie sink. And for some reason I have like five Adam Hergen Rothers and I have five, I just have five of everybody. Not necessarily. There could be three, there could be five. There could, um, so I, I did where, too much merging. Well, this is where tagging and smart views can come in so great. So how do you want to see your data when you come in every day, right? If it's overwhelming yeah. because of what you did with PySync or some other type of, um, you know, drop into the world, you can actually set your default view by how you want to see things. So let me get into this. Actually, that's a fun one. I forgot how to do it again. I started to do that. Like I have running, I'm a tagger. So like I have things like, um, running group friends yep um yep. stuff like that uh friends who like bacon um yep. different I like, things I like, like that so here's and, how um, I like bacon. yeah but so I but my biggest one that I do that I think people forget to do is buyer and seller and then whatever year it is so that later I can sort all my buyers and sellers by year yeah and, and that's probably and my sold. most important tag yeah, yeah, and yeah. bought and sold is even more important, taking them off that buyer and seller and changing them from bought to sold. So I'm in my training and demo. So say the, the tag I want to see is demo and training. So once I apply and I get that filter, and I want to make sure I always see 100 contacts or 500 at a time, I can then come in here, create a smart view, call it what I want, demo and training list then i say save it as a smart view as my default now every time i open command this is the default view i'm going to see you could also add things like the doing the database two tags or all your a pluses or just specific groups of friends you want to find all your market center tech trainers the other thing i like to do is when working with those different lists check off recently active you can click it and then it will sort the people by the ones who are most active on your website, smart plans, or your command consumer app. So once you save that filter on exactly how you wanna see it, it will always show that way. You could also do all contacts, show 500, and then save that as your default smart view if you wanna see more contacts at once instead of 10 or um, the smaller increments at a time. But yeah, I love, and once you have the smart views, you can then see them on your phone, on your phone app. That's one of my favorite little hacks and tricks. Phone app is amazing, because it shows you, like if you don't know who to call, yes. literally, it shows you whose birthday it is, whose anniversary it is, leads you've never contacted, anybody who's been recently active on any of your sites. Well, There's one of the ones I love too is no neighborhoods. No neighborhoods usually means no addresses. 
So you can go in and clean those up and call people and say, hey, doing a database cleanup or don't call it a database. I'm just going through my contacts and realize I didn't have your address anymore. I don't know what I did. Get the address. They're either going to go, who are you? And then you can delete them because it's okay to delete. We learned that this week. And then either put them on a smart plan or delete them. All right. When is the best time to sync? Do you have to resync? I guess it depends on what sync you are using and how you've got it turned on. Are you using API Nation, Cheryl? I honestly don't know. <laughs> I okay. just can you just review from when you entered that data? So the so the data oh from your command desktop to your command app? Yes. It's real time. It happens within three or five seconds. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if you're using a uh, sync thing that you could pay for like API nation. No, no. no. Gotcha. Yeah, no, it's it, it's real time. It's real time. We were putting tasks on. We were using smart plans yesterday in one of the classes I was teaching. And as we were putting smart plans and we had them all open their command app and you are able to see your tasks in real time immediately that you would have to do for today and now upcoming the rest of the month and as far out as you can look. Thank you. Yeah. I have a quick question. I'm oh, new to course. Keller Williams like this month. Um, just going through my checklist. Can you guys just share some best practices for a smart plan? Oh, I love this. I love this question. <laughs> I know my nerds are going to love this question. I'll give my two or three or 10, then the cool. nerds can pick up too. Start with the KW ones. Download all of those first because they were built to continually work no matter what and they don't break. The other thing is the only two smart plans you can use for home anniversary and birthdays that actually work and continue to work are the KW ones. So if you go and find a birthday or an anniversary one that somebody else created, it's not going to work. KW did not okay. open the functionality up to use that so it says but, i need a twilio subscription yep it'll and eventually what's going to happen is you'll get a task but just keep watching that you don't okay. need a twilio it just start watching um they're going to make it so that instead of a twilio you'll get a task to send a text awesome That's but you'll also see awesome. upcoming birthdays in your app so watch that because those will continue to show up there my second big thing with smart plans is that an email on a lead gen, on a smart plan for lead gen, Facebook ad or Google ad or something you're putting out that needs speed to lead should always be email as the first step, always. Because if it's 10 o'clock at night and Aunt Lucy hit a bottle of wine and, it, and is clicking on properties, you're not going to text her, but an email will go out. So that's it. And I always add, if this comes in after um, business hours, I will get back to you on the next business day. So that way they get something and then you can follow up with all the other tasks. So that okay. way that you're makes not sense. breaking law. Yeah. Cause it's not going to, if you do use automated texting, it will not go out during law breaking times. Got it. What about you guys in smart plans? I love, oh, and double check all the ones in the library that you download that were written. You can search by me, by Maggie, by some of the other nerds in the uh, New England region. We've written some really cool ones and I'm very big on using form fields correctly. So that way your stuff just drops right in. A lot of agents or people who publish don't write that way. Always look for the stars, look for how many downloads and read everything. We had one of our agents send something out and it said from the greater PA region, <laughs> which it produced a ton of conversation, but it was not still a great a, look. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So just check everything else. Somebody yeah, else. Uh, on some of those, they might be great, great plans and you really like them. And on the fifth or sixth step, it's saying call Steve DeAngelis at blank for more information. And if you don't mind me taking your clients, that's fine. But you know, you're working for them, you should keep them. And, and, uh, you know, and I've noticed that in, in a lot of the smart plans authored by other agents, they'll, they'll hard code something in and it's at the bottom of an email or at the bottom of a text. 
And uh, you don't want to find out after you have the thing running that, oh, it's telling everyone to call somebody in South Carolina. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or you you say something that is outside of the boundaries of your state uh, rules or regs, right? We don't want to. Yeah. We don't want to. We want to make sure if you're sending an email, you have all your state laws in there, right? We want to make sure Makes if sense. you have to. Yeah. If you have to have office phone number and address on everything like in New Hampshire, I think we have to have every piece of information about your life on things. So. Great. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. Look, my Brooke Silva, Brooke with an E. You'll see all the ones I create for you guys. Um, I often recreate ones that have Twilio in them to make them be task based. There's a new one in there called Who Are You? And it's just a uh, task to send out to people. Like they're in my database. I have no idea who you are. Well, great. Let's clean it up. You're either going to respond, tell me to take off your list, or you're going to tell me you want to buy a house today. So it's only three <laughs> outcomes are they yeah. ignore you and you delete shoot shoot. archive. Yeah. So go download those. Maggie, you got any new smart plans out? Uh, so I have a couple, but mine are mostly, I have a couple of uh, lead follow-ups that I actually created for some of my teams here in the office. Awesome. Um, for leads that come in through like a Zillow or a, um, a realtor.com. So I have lots of those in mind. Excellent. Are people getting paid for those? Like, you know how there's paid ones and free ones? Are the paid things open or no? No, nope, there's oh, no free. paid ones. Nope. Nope. Just I'd, be rich. Just <laughs> I'd be rich. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I'd be rich. Some of them I had to de delete because they're just outdated. Some of them had thousands of downloads. I'd be rich. I'd be rich. I wish. I think that fell. I don't think they're going to ever uh, have a cost now. We can just include our Venmo in the description. I mean, yeah. If you use this, like to donate more. to the cause. <laughs> No, and if you're looking for something, sometimes just typing in the word, if you're looking for Halloween, even like you want to see something about Halloween, you are not feeling it, right? You are not feeling creative enough to write about Halloween. Out the door it goes. Just find it, make sure it says exactly what it needs to, and then put it in one the of the best account. smart plans out there is the Marty Miller's like missing email, missing phone number campaigns. Yep. Like the easiest, it seems so silly, but honestly gets you a lot of results. Yep. And what you can also sort your data bank by those fields. So if you don't see a phone number, you can just bulk action, add to smart plan. It sends them an email and says, Hey, I don't have your phone number. It's a little nicer than that. All right, Laura, setting up neighborhoods. Do you mean in command or the neighborhoods themselves? I see you getting a mute. I see you. <laughs> That was a swear, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> like in command, and I am pulled over by the way, I, I, I pulled over in the middle so I could do your class. Um, so in command, there's like this section in the opportunity and it's like, I know we can set up our own seller and buyer guide to be like personalized, right? But I feel yeah. like in the opportunity, there's a tab that I never touch that like has something to do with the actual people and and if they downloaded your app more would happen in that section let me see if i can find it nerds oh it's the second button in the um is it the client update no no it's 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 in command it's when you open it's when you're going through the stages for the it's opportunity guide builder guide builder nope no but it's hang on i'm going in going in I gotta find an opportunity. opportunity. I know I have some. How do I explain this? I can't explain myself. We're talking about the place where you can see where they are on the checklist, or is that, or if they have it. Is oh, the consumers see it when they log into their app about where they are in the process. Maybe that's what it is. I don't even know what it does because I never touch it. I'm like, oh, there's that button. Nah, and then. But I feel like I'm missing out and I don't have great internet here. So my thing's like real slow. So I'm not call it. I don't know. It's Is like, it there's like, there's like, you enter your information and then there's another section and then there's the set button I don't touch. It's the seller profile button. That. 
I don't know. You... See, that's what mine always says, not registered with consumer platform. Why that, should I yes. do that? Why do I want to do it? I, if, so my OCD does not like it that it says that when I get there, bothers me, and I want it to be better than that. Why is Doc McStuffins not on your app, Brooke? Because <laughs> Doc McStuffins didn't have a real email to log in with. <laughs> Let's see if this one gets. I know it was coming up. It was, uh, it's so we can bring this next week if we want, but it's there, and I never use it, and I want. I, I, there it is. And I thought it had something to do with setting them up on neighborhoods. Once they got into the platform, I thought it would do stuff. I don't, but I don't know what it does because that's what mine looks like all the time. No, this this shows you what they're connected to for you in the app. So if Doc and SpongeBob did have were logged in and downloaded my app, I'd be able to see that they're connected here. The client guide is something different. They do have to be associated with the app, so they have to have logged in. You must see that green little check mark, and they even give you the little hint and trick. Then the, that's where you get back to the guide builder. And that I started, but I just haven't finished it yet. Like I that's got a couple of my own photos in there and the rest of it but, like was like, I was like, yeah, that's okay. But you know what? Don't overthink it. There's only a couple of steps that happen on each side. What do you, when do you want it to go? You know what I mean? Like it doesn't right. have to be ginormous. The only thing I would say about that is that is live. Whatever's in right. there is live and it is set up for a one contract state. So I try to get all my agents to at least add a PNS stage to it. Absolutely. Um, but it can be really useful if you have somebody on your guide, right? Imagine like having them walk through the process, giving them agency about like the, the buying and the selling process. It can be really healthy with that 10 plus experience. And then it links with your opportunities, which you saw where you can right. see where they, where they think they are in the process. So maybe they checked off offer and you're like, uh, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> they have to have, they have to have accepted my app. Yeah. And what other power is my app giving them? Like making their own neighborhoods? But maybe that's why I was asking that question. So once they have my app, can they create their own neighborhoods as well? And then that shows back up in that contact section, right? Because I notice sometimes there's more neighborhoods than I put in there. Right. And that's what your clients are doing is they're subscribing to their own neighborhoods. And that's where the power of the neighborhood nurture and your app or website really come in. Because from... From those neighborhoods, you can add so much more, but let me go to, so when I'm clicking around as the client and doing things, say I see this property and I love it. Eh, maybe I want to be mid Cambridge, right? Maybe I'm going to start moving around. Maybe I'm going to draw an area. Nope, nothing there. Draw. Okay, now everything that I'm doing is going to come back here to the timeline and it's gonna tell me what my clients are doing. So you can see that I viewed a neighborhood and I favorited a listing. And if I'm going in there and starting to do things like add neighborhoods, maybe I wanna look in, let's just say Bedford, New Hampshire. I'm gonna follow a couple. Confirm. Now those are also gonna show up on my contacts. And they show up in a different color. So the ones you add are dark green, the ones your clients add are white, they're in the reverse color. And you can also see it here. The other cool thing it does is it shows you that they've been recently active on something you have sent to them. See, just a few seconds ago, you can see that this person was active. And that's what you were talking about before. Yep. Earlier. Yes. Yep. Your website's powerful because between the app and the consumer app and your website, you're getting the feedback that you may not be getting verbally from them when you're doing things, right? So all of a sudden they're filtering for homes that are way out of their budget or way under their budget, what has changed? So it gives you a reason to, to contact them. Or what if they're looking at areas that aren't yours? You may have missed out on a referral opportunity. I love it. Put everybody on the neighborhood nurtures. 
and you don't need an address. You can just go in and pick three to five neighborhoods. I like to throw weird ones on if I know where they love to travel or where they're originally from. I'll give them one of those neighborhoods. I've got Montreal on my mom's. And if you've been in my classes, you know about the Doris effect. Well, the Doris effect works because she called me and said, why am I looking at properties in Montreal? I said, well, I thought you'd want to go home sometimes, like go visit or see what the property's like. <laughs> She's like, well, actually, that's really fun. Thank you. <laughs> Doris effect. All right, gang. There is no call next week because of the holiday. So there is um, no growth call. But remember, you've got all your growth stuff for the entire month ready to go. Sign up for sh Summer of Shift. Say that 10 times fast. And then we will see you when we get back on the following week. We hope you have a safe and a uh, wonderful 4th of July. Get some time for yourself. And we will see you next week. Thanks, Nerd Herd. No stumping. Thank you very work. much. Still Thank not you. stumped. Still not stumped. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend. Bye, guys.